So a question that's been asked of me is, what did I mean when I said the Bank of Japan was between a rock and a hard place? Well, I wanted to just give a brief overview of that in this video. All right, so I pulled out my trusty whiteboard here to go over some of these key concepts to understand what the situation is in Japan and why the Bank of Japan had to make this move. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is the demographics in Japan. Most people understand uh, or know that the, the birth-death ratio is going in the wrong direction. There are less Japanese being born, and so a larger and larger percentage of the population is older people, which means that less people are paying into the system and more people are taking out. And uh, the savings rate in Japan has been declining because of that. We've got the older population not only taking money out for just expenses and, and their retirement, but they are also redeeming money that they lent previously lent to the government. And Japan has the highest debt to GDP ratio in the world. Yet the interest on that debt is very, very low. And that's because the government has been able to tap the local, the domestic savings pool to finance their budget. And even though the debt is so low, roughly 50% of tax receipts goes towards this 1% interest payment. And the government borrows roughly 50% of the budget. I'm using real round figures here to just get this concept out and to help you understand it. You can later, if you want to, go ahead and look at the actual numbers. Or I might provide some links for that as well in below. But the key concept to understand here is that even though the interest is only 1% of the debt, because there is so much debt, because they have such a high debt to GDP ratio, 50% of the tax receipt, the income that comes in, goes out in interest payments. And the danger here is that if this debt, the percentage gets changed from 1% to 2%, then you're essentially bankrupt. If this went to 2%, then this would double to 100%. Now, because of the de demographics and the savings rate, the Japanese government had to uh, make a couple choices uh, whether to continue to try to tap from the domestic savings rate, savings pool, or to go to the international debt markets. And Japan has the lowest interest payments of any of the developed countries in the world. So you can bet that they're not going to be able to get 1% for going to the international debt markets. In, in America, you have to, the government has to pay more. In European countries, they have to pay more. And there's no way that if the Japanese wanted to go to the international debt market that they would get some kind of uh, deal as they have gotten from the local savings pool. And this is why the Bank of Japan was between a rock and a hard place. They either fund it themselves, and the, the Bank of Japan is supposed to be independent, and their monetary policy is supposed to be uh, kankenized, supposed to be uh, irrelevant to the expenditures or the income of the government. Yet, they stepped in to buy the Japanese government bonds to finance the government so that the government did not have to go to the international debt markets to raise funds. Now, if, if you put this into terms of, of your own personal finances, if you had to pay 50% uh, of your income to the interest on the debt that you have, 
and you were only paying 1% and it doubled, you'd be bankrupt. There's no way that you could do it. So the, the, the Bank of Japan had a choice to either destroy the currency by monetizing the debt, which means just printing up money and, give, and buying the Japanese bonds that are issued, or force the Japanese government into bankruptcy and to cut back on its expenditures. And of course, no good uh, politician wants to be the one who's on watch when that happens. So they kick the can down the road, hoping for some kind of a miracle, I guess, or to export their way into prosperity at the expense of their trading partners. <laughs>